a sort of one-on-one -on -one battle. There's a lot on the line. Both teams are pretty aggressive. We get out on the race course, we want to win. It does have a real historical significance. One mile off the south coast of England, the Isle of Wight is an island nestled in the shadow of the UK mainland. Its white chalk cliffs and dramatic shoreline, typical of the iconic British coast. Cowes, its most famous town, for most of the year a sleepy seaside village, with a small collection of shops, pubs and hotels serving the island's local population, and a steady stream of tourists. Richard Quigley owns Corrie's Cabin, the most popular fish and chip shop in town. The island's beautiful, but Cowes itself is well looked after. The people of Cowes look after the town. You tend to find things in Cowes that you might not find in other seaside towns the same size. So yeah, it's a lovely place to be. At the other end of the high street, the Watch House Barn Cafe keeps the cows' residents and visitors fed and watered. Barry Glazier runs the family business with his wife. We're busy most of the year round, I'm constantly making cakes left, right and centre, trying to keep up with it all. That's it. That's all. This is one of the best advertising gimmicks going. The little boys see it outside, they've got to bring their parents in to see it. So it's, it works well, it's one of my best investments. Sitting on the edge of protected waters and just a short hop from the mainland, Cowes supports a vibrant boat building industry which dates back hundreds of years. Boatyards and sail lofts line the Medina River, keeping Cowes' active sailing population in good shape on the water. Life moves at a steady pace on the island, but once a year, it totally and utterly transforms. Cow's Week is the largest sailing regatta anywhere in the world. The first week of August sees over 1,000 boats and some 50,000 visitors flock to the island to take part in a week-long sailing carnival. Races and competitions across a range of fleets make it a key date in any sailor's diary. For Cowes residents, it's the busiest week of the year. In the sails loft, the staff are knee-deep in repairs. During Cows Week, we're just doing race sales, mostly from people who've been out racing today. And it ranges from small repairs to really big repairs. Al's got a really big repair over there. Everything's needed back on the water tomorrow morning, so it's busy. Sometimes it goes on for hours, so it's busy. It's all going. Ever since the town's boat builders attracted sailors from all over the world 200 years ago, Cows has been a buzzing hub for yachting. And at the centre of it stands one of the most venerable yacht clubs in the world the Royal Yacht Squadron. The squadron is a, a bastion of yachting. It's the heart, really, I suppose, of British yachting establishment. You've got to have something like that in a place as historic to yachting as cows. On top of the hill overlooking the squadron, Holy Trinity Church has stood since 1832 and has drawn a local and yachting congregation ever since. The clock in the tower has kept time for residents and sailors alike for over 160 years. In August 1851, Cowes was as popular a holiday destination as it is today. With its privileged natural location, many sailors flocked to enjoy themselves in the waters around the island. But that year, something was to happen that would change the face of yachting forever. The event was brought about by a bunch of Americans who came over here and wanted to display American technology in shipbuilding and design. And what better than to build a boat, come over here and trim the hide off the Brits. 
The Americans were looking to make some money and were offered a race around the Isle of Wight against 14 of the best boats in cows. The prize? A tall silver trophy worth 100 pounds. Their boat, the America, was unique and few knew what to expect from its performance. It was very different to any boat the Brits had ever seen before. Its masts were raked aft, its sails were of cotton instead of the flax that everybody used over here, and they were a lot flatter cut. It uh, destroyed the fleet, I think is the best way to describe it. The America sailed back across the Atlantic, taking the cup, now named after the boat, back home to the United States. For over a century and a half, the world's richest and most powerful men have fought to take it home, captivated by the spirit and prestige of this ancient competition. Here in Cowes, the oldest trophy in international sport was born. And this week, two teams are recreating its legendary beginning. In a week-long regatta climaxing with the original Round the Island Challenge, two of the best match racing teams in the world will do battle in the waters around the Isle of Wight. Current America's Cup holders, US Team BMW Oracle Racing and Team Origin, a British challenger, will be racing in the 1851 Cup, a modern-day second act of a local competition that left its mark on world sporting history. And this means some of the finest sailors in the world are in town. The American team arrives fresh off the back of a victorious challenge for the 33rd America's Cup in Valencia in February 2010. In their revolutionary giant trimaran, powered by the world's largest wing, the US team, owned by software mogul Larry Ellison, beats Swiss holders Alinghi in a convincing and spectacular series witnessed by millions around the world. The 1851 Cup is a return to sailing in more conventional racing yachts and a chance to relive their country's famous history. Here we are in Cowes, 159 years after the Cup was first raced here in 1851. We're back in a friendly series for the next four days here off of Cowes against the British America's Cup prospective team, Team Origin. For BMW Oracle Racing, we're delighted to be back here at the invitation of the Royal Thames Yacht Club, and it should be quite a great battle on the water. Team Origin have spent the last three years in an intense training and development program with the aim to bring back the America's Cup. The 1851 Cup is the next step on that journey and a chance to remind the world that Britannia did once rule the waves and may yet do again. Team Origin's mission is to uh, reverse 160 years of history. I think we, the British team, uh, want to prove something and um, uh, every race is going to be hard fought. Leading the teams are two of the best sailors in the world. Australian James Spithill, the youngest skipper ever to win an America's Cup, and Ben Ainsley, Britain's most successful Olympic sailor ever. I mean, this is where it all, it all started. Cows in general is just really challenging as a sailor. So it's a, it's a really good test for, for the whole team. It's, you know, poignant that we're here racing and we're talking about 1851 and how it all started around the Isle of Wight. It's good for spectators, but it's also great for us on the boat. It's really enjoyable. It's pretty clear cut. There's someone's going to win and someone's going to lose. And you, uh, you know, you obviously want to win and it's, uh, you'll just do whatever you can within the rules. and. Uh, you know, sailing the boat on the water to make that happen. There's no holds barred, this kind of racing. It's about, you know, taking, being aggressive at the right time, I think, and um, certainly a lot about teamwork. I mean, for us to race uh, Ben and Ian and the guys on their home waters was, um, you know, pretty exciting prospect. You know, you'd have to say he's definitely the best sailor in the world today. Um, and I think when you look at, you know, there's a lot of guys that have been able to be successful in the Olympics but a lot of guys have struggled to make the, the changeover to this, this different discipline. And Ben would be one of the few that has done it. I really respect Jimmy um, for all you know, the racing that he's done and he's achieved. He's a very cool guy, both on and off the water, especially when it's tight in the match races. I think that's one of his strengths. He's certainly been the best match racer around for a long time. You know, he's a good mate of mine, but come race time, that's all forgotten. <laughs> For three days, the teams will fight it out in a series of match races, the purest form of one-on-one -on -one sailing competition. Two boats head-to-head -head around a simple course, one leg against the wind and one leg with the wind, repeated twice before the dash to the finish line. 
there is only one aim, to win at all costs within the rules, forcing the other into conceding penalties and gaining the advantage by stealing the wind from the other's sails. Each race involves a set of typical duels, at the start line, in the scramble up wind, at the turning marks, and the high speed race downwind onto the boat's huge spinnakers. Every move must be precise, every tactic perfectly executed. There can only be one winner and one